Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you because we are at the Bible study tonight. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for protection. Thank you because of the love and the interest you have given us to come together with the people of God to study your word. We are praying, Lord, that tonight you open our eyes of understanding so that we'll see and behold what you have preserved for us in your word in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, we know that the day is coming when everyone will appear before you. And it will, it will not be a laughing matter, it will be a serious moment when everyone will be judged according to what you've written in the books that you have written. Lord, we are praying that today you make us wise unto salvation so that, Lord, we'll escape the judgment that will come upon the world at that time in Jesus' name. We're looking up to you tonight that your spirit will apply the word of God to every heart. And you bring conviction to every heart. Draw us closer to yourself, Lord, that we will be the kind of people we ought to be. That we will live the life you want us to live and escape the judgment that will come upon the world on that final day. Thank you, Lord, because we know that you have answered our prayer. In Jesus' name, we pray. I welcome every one of you to the Bible study today once again. We thank the Lord because the Lord has been leading us in the study of the word. And we're in Revelation, we're in Revelation chapter 18. I'm going to read from verse 1. We're studying from verse 9. I'm reading from verse 1 so you can get a feel of what is here in this chapter. And so you can get a connection between what we studied last week and what we're studying today. Revelation chapter 18 from verse 1. And after these things I saw an, another angel come down from heaven having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying babylon the great is falling is falling and it's become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird for all the nations all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth have waxed rich through the abundance of her daily cases. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven. And, they, and God has remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works. In the cup which she has filled, fill to her double. How much she had glorified herself, and lived and lived deliciously, delicately, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she says in her heart, I sit as a queen, and I am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine. And she shall be utterly burnt to a fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. Before the opening of this chapter, that is, before chapter 18 of Revelation, we have actually seen, we have been introduced to the final destruction of Babylon. In Revelation chapter 14 verse 8, the declaration was, came through an angel saying, Babylon is falling, is falling, that great city, because she made all the nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Not only in chapter 14, we also have it in chapter 16 verse 19. As the seventh bowl of judgment and the wrath of God was poured, will be poured upon the earth. We are told that the great Babylon came into remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of the wrath of God. The judgment of God will come on end time Babylon. Future Babylon, that is the great capital city of the world during the time of the great tribulation, that is the end time, will be destroyed by God himself. God will pour out the cup of wrath upon Babylon. You're asking the reason why. Well, the reason why the Lord will judge Babylon, number one, is because of Babylon's iniquity. Anywhere you find iniquity, there will be judgment. 
and Babylon will be the very siege of iniquity. And because of Babylon's iniquity, there will be judgment, number two. Because of Babylon's infidelity. And because of the infidelity and unfaithfulness of Babylon, judgment will come upon Babylon. And whether it's an individual, a family, or a city, or even a whole nation, where you find infidelity, there's going to be the judgment of God. Number three, because of Babylon's immorality. Prostitution, immorality, and corruption, and pollution will be very common. Will be something will be the other of the day in the time of Babylon. That is the future Babylon. Immorality will spread so much. There will be so much immorality, fornication, and, uh, I, and uh, ad adultery. And because of that, there will be the judgment of God upon Babylon. And even today, as many people as are living in fornication, adultery, and they're living in immorality, they're going to have the judgment of God. And sometimes you'll find that even in a family, uh, there are those who are children of the same parents, they commit immorality together. Or maybe the people that are just, uh, they say they're Christian, but they're living in sin, in immorality together, there's going to be the judgment of God. Number four, because of Babylon's influence. Babylon actually, we are told in the passages we have read, that the Babylon made all the other nations drink of the wine of fornication. And because of that Babylon's influence, negative influence upon other nations, upon other people, there is going to be the judgment of God. And if you are a man, you are a woman, and you have negative influence on other people, you are making people to go astray, to live in sin. That bad influence, like Babylon's influence, is going to be judged by the Lord. Number five, because of Babylon's inhumanity. That is not respecting anyone's life and shedding the blood of innocent people, righteous people, pure people. Because of Babylon's inhumanity, Babylon is going to come in remembrance before the Lord and there's going to be fierce, terrible judgment upon Babylon. And if you are a kind of person like that, you don't respect human life, and you don't respect the position of other people. You are inhuman. You are inconsiderate. That being inconsiderate, insensitivity, inhumanity is going to make you come under the judgment of God. Number six, because of Babylon's impenitence. Warning after warning, instruction after instruction have been neglected. And because of that impenitence and because of continuing in sin until the very time when the cup of the iniquity came to the full, the judgment of God is going to come. And so as we have read in verses 1 to 8, and you see that judgment came upon Babylon, understand, it was because of the iniquity. Because of their infidelity, because of their immorality, because of their influence, because of their inhumanity, and because of their impenitence. And anywhere you find all those things in the life of anyone, any family, any group of people, any assembly, the judgment of God is going to come. And as the judgment came upon Babylon, what we find is that there was mourning, there was wailing, there was weeping, there was crying because of the sorrow and the torment that came upon Babylon. Babylon. That's why we're looking at verses 9 to 24 today. And we're talking about lamentation over the destruction of end time Babylon. In Revelation chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning standing afar off for the fear for fear for the fear of her torment saying alas alas that great city babylon the mighty city for in one hour is thy judgment come and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all all thine wood and all manner the all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointment and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and bees and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and the souls of men those were the things they were trading in they were even into slavery and they were selling the souls of men we were told in verse 15 and the fruits that thy soul lusteth after had departed from thee and all things which were dainty and goodly had departed from thee and thou shalt find them no more at all 
and the, mer the merchants of these things which were made rich by her stand afar off for the fear of her torment weeping and wailing and saying alas alas that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and dead with gold and precious stones and pearls for in one hour so great riches is come to naught and every shipmaster, all the company, in ships and sailors, and as many as trade by sea, stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of a burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is made, is she made desolate, rejoice over her. Thou heaven and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on earth. And a mighty angel took up a stone with a great, like a great millstone, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians, and of harp and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men, were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries, witchcraft, magic, occultism, for by thy sorcery were all the nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that was slain upon the earth that's the morning and as the wailing that came as a result of the judgment of babylon there will be great mourning by the political leaders of the world at that time by the governments of the world when the capital city of the antichrist will be destroyed nations whose power will depend entirely upon the antichrist and the capital city of the antichrist will mourn greatly the economies will be greatly affected the whole world will undergo disaster after disaster at this time and many of the great cities of the world will be destroyed and reduced to ashes they will fall and they will be destroyed like Babylon. There will be great mourning and lamentation. As we talk about the great mourning and lamentation for end time Babylon, please understand for the people that are living in sin, for the people that are living in wickedness, for the people that have not repented, for the people that continue in iniquity, in penitence, and they do not want to repent of their sins. There's going to be the judgment of God, and the people that see such people, they will pity, they will be sorrowful, they will mourn, they will weep and cry for them. In Osea chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 1. Osea chapter 4, verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, and there is no mercy, and there is no knowledge of God in the land. And when there is no mercy, there is no truth, there is no knowledge of the Lord in the land, judgment is going to come. In verse 2 it says, by swearing, by lying, and killing, and stealing, and committing adultery, they break out, blood touches blood. Therefore shall the land mourn. It's not only Babylon, any land, any group of people, any nation, any place where you find all those things, the lack of truth. You, you find lying, you find deception, you find falsehood, you find fraud. There's going to be the judgment of God and the judgment will bring mourning. Therefore shall the land mourn and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish and the beasts and with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven, yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. In Jeremiah chapter 4, reading from verse 26, Jeremiah chapter 4, reading from verse 26. Here we are told in the word of God, I beheld and lo, the fruitful place was a, was a wilderness. And all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. For thus, as the Lord said, the whole earth shall be desolate. 
yet will I not make a full end, for they shall the earth mourn, and the heavens above be black, because I have spoken it, I have purposed it, and will not repent, neither will I turn back from it. The Lord is saying that judgment will come, and the judgment is certain, and the judgment is irreversible. And the Lord said, because that judgment is coming, and it is irreversible, it's coming upon the people of the world, the people of the world will mourn. So, as we're reading about the mourning of, of the people, by, uh, for Babylon. Let us understand all the people that live in sin. If your relatives are living in sin, talk to them and preach to them so that they will repent. Otherwise, when the judgment will come, everybody that knows, all those people will mourn for them. Ezekiel chapter 7, reading from verse 25. Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 25. Destruction cometh. And they shall seek peace, and there shall be no peace, there shall be none. Mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet, but the Lord shall perish from the priest, and counsel from the ancients. The king shall mourn, and the prince shall be clothed with desolation, and the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled. I will do unto them after their way, and according to their deserts, I will judge them for the Lord, for they shall know that I am the Lord. Judgment is coming. Uh, there are many people, they're living in sin today, and when you talk to them, they're smiling, they're laughing, they're making jest of it, because it's nothing serious to them at all. But the Lord Jesus Christ said, all those who are laughing while they're continuing in sin now, the day is coming when they will cry, when they will weep, when they will mourn, because of the devastation, the fearful judgment of God that will come upon them. That's why Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, Luke chapter 6, verse 25, woe unto you that are full for ye shall hunger and woe unto you that laugh now for ye shall mourn and weep woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you for so did they did their fathers to the false prophets when the people are praising you and they're exalting you, they're glorifying you, they're honoring you. While well, you're living in sin, while well, you're doing evil, and then you're rejoicing and laughing. The Lord is saying, like they're going to mourn bitterly for Babylon, so they will mourn for you as well. And you yourself, you will mourn. Actually, at the time of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, when the Lord shall appear in the sky, the people of God shall rejoice. But then, the people of the world, because devastation and judgment and desolation is coming upon them, they're going to cry. They're going to weep bitter tears because of the judgment that will come upon their lives. In Matthew chapter 24 verse 30. Matthew chapter 24 verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So that's what we're looking at today, the mourning that is going to take place because of the uh, because of the destruction of end time Babylon. Lamentation, weeping, crying, wailing, mourning over the destruction of end time Babylon. I divide the study to three parts. Number one, wailing for the destruction of materialistic Babylon. Wailing. For the destruction of materialistic Babylon. Number two, warning of the desolation of Mary making Babylon. Warning of the desolation of Mary making Babylon. Then number three, wickedness and depravity of murderous Babylon. Wickedness and depravity of murderous Babylon. Let's go back to number one. Number one, it's wailing for the destruction of materialistic Babylon. We come to Revelation chapter 18. In Revelation chapter 18, reading from verse 9, you will see what I will have happened when Babylon would have been destroyed. Just look at a few verses there. Revelation chapter 18, verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously delicately with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her torment. They will be standing afar off for the fear of her torment saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city for in one hour is thy judgment come. And so the judgment will come. As a result of that judgment, they will be crying. 
There'll be wailing. There'll be weeping. There'll be mourning as well. In fact, he chooses that a word wail or lament or mourn or weep so many times in, in, that, in this passage. In Ezekiel chapter 26, Ezekiel chapter 26, talking about the crying, about the wailing, and about uh, the sorrow of the people when Babylon will be destroyed. And the same thing when the sinners of the world today, when they will be destroyed, and when they will not be able to enter, to enter the kingdom, and they will be in darkness forever and ever. In Ezekiel chapter 26, verse 17, And they shall take up a lamentation for thee, and say to thee, How art thou destroyed? That was inhabited with, of sea-fearing men, the renowned city, which was strong in the sea. She and her, her inhabitants, which caused their terror to be on all that haunted. Now shall the isles tremble in the day that of thy form. Yea, the isle that are in the sea shall be, shall be troubled at thy departure. It tells us in verse 19, it says, For thus says the Lord God, When I shall make thee a desolate city, like the cities that are not inhabited, when I shall bring up the deep upon thee, and great water shall cover thee, when I shall bring thee down with them that descend into the pit, and with the people of old time, and shall set thee in the low parts of the earth, in places desolate of uh, desolate of old, with them that go down to the pit, that thou be not inhabited. I shall set glory in the land of the living. I will make thee a terror, and thou shalt be no more, though thou be sought for, yet shall thou never be found again says the lord god and that's prophetic language from ezekiel talking about the time when the judgment will come upon that great city and when that judgment comes upon the great city it will be so destroyed and people will look for it they will not find it anymore there will be total complete entire uh, permanent desolation we're told in chapter 27 of that same ezekiel chapter 27 reading from verse 30 still talking about the desolation about the judgment and about the cause of the of the of the wailing and of the mourning in ezekiel chapter 27 verse 30 and shall cause their voice to be heard against thee and shall cry bitterly and shall cast up dust upon their heads and they shall wallow themselves in the ashes that's a sign of mourning that is there'll be so much sorrow and there will be so much torment and the people will throw ashes upon their heads just wailing and crying and screaming bitterly in verse 31 they shall make themselves utterly bold for thee and get them with sackcloth and they shall weave for thee with bitterness of heart and bitter wailing Wailing because of the destruction, wailing because of the damnation, wailing because of the desolation, wailing because of the things that will come upon them in verse 32 and in their wailing. They shall take up a lamentation for thee and shall lament over thee, saying, What city is like Tyrus? Like the destroyed in the midst of the sea, when thy wares went forth out of the sea that fills many people that didst enrich the kings of the earth or the multitude of thy riches and of thy merchandise well as we're talking about the city please understand and this may even be the picture of some individuals there are some individuals like this they make almost everybody up in sight they give their body for whatever sinful pleasure men want and men, men are exalting them and praising them and appreciating them and they think that they're on top of the world and they say i sit as a queen i live as a queen I, I i act as a queen and i behave as a queen and i shall never be a widow i shall never see trouble or torment or terror but terror is coming judgment is coming and when judgment comes there'll be lamentation and weeping and wailing and mourning because that judgment of God will be unbearable and if you are like that today if you are like that today living in sin sin of immorality and sin of infidelity 
and the sin of idolatry and the sin of the flesh the pleasure of the flesh and you're seeing that you're enjoying life judgment is coming and when judge that judgment comes you will not be able to escape there will be mourning there will be crying there will be sorrow and it will be an eternal judgment that will be upon such an individual everlasting punishment we're reading from verse 34 in the time when thou shalt be broken by the seas in the depths of the waters thy merchandise and all thy company in the midst of thee shall fall all the inhabitants of the earth shall be astonished at thee and their kings shall be so afraid they shall be troubled in their countenance the, the, the merchants among the people shall hiss at thee thou shalt be a terror and never shall be any more that means the desolation and the destruction will be final, will be complete. That, that those individuals, they will not be able to rise anymore. And that's why those who are wise, they're taking note of all this today and they're saying, Oh Lord, I don't want to be, I don't want to go through that judgment. I don't want to be in this world when that judgment will come upon Babylon or when that judgment will come upon the unbelieving, the unrepentant, the impenitent. And the best thing for you to do is to repent today, is to hold on to the Lord today, is to know that Jesus. Jesus Christ died for you and he doesn't want you to continue in sin so that you'll be able to have the mercy of God. Amos chapter 5 reading from verse 16 you will see that in so many passages of the scripture it talks about the wailing about the crying and about the sorrow, about the torment, about the terror, about the wrath of God that is coming upon the unbelievers and then the mourning, the lamentation that will come as a result of that. And they will mourn and cry and weep and wail and there will be nobody to comfort them. In fact, when they start crying, they're going to cry till all eternity. Every moment of every hour, of every day, of every time, all through eternity will be a time of lamentation and mourning. And what a wonderful thing to see the world of escape and then to say oh lord i don't want to experience that kind of judgment coming upon this world i know today is the day of mercy and this is dispensation of the grace of god of the love of god of the mercy of god and this is the time you can escape the judgment of god before it becomes too late for you amos chapter 5 reading from verse 16 it tells us therefore the lord the god of the, the god of hosts the lord says thus wailing shall be in all streets and they shall say in all the highway, alas, alas. And they shall call the husband man to mourning. And such as are skillful of lamentation to weeping. And in all vineyards shall be wailing. For I will pass through thee, says the Lord. Want to you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end, to what purpose is, uh, is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him. Or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent beat him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? Very, even very dark and no brightness in it. Here we are being told the word of God that the judgment of God will be inescapable at that time. If there's any time to escape, this is the time to escape. If there's any moment to be able to avoid the judgment of God, today is the day of mercy, today is the day of love, and today is the day of forgiveness, of salvation. If you wait too long and the judgment day comes, then it says there will be no, way to, no place to flee, no place to go to because it will be, verse 19, as if a man flee from a lion thinking, now I'm through, now I've escaped. And then a bear met him and still destroyed him. Or maybe he escaped from the lion and he went into the house and leaned the sand upon the wall and a serpent beat him. Which means that uh, no, no matter where people turn at that time, at the time of the great tribulation, and we know it can happen anytime because the rapture is coming even now. And then at that time of the great tribulation, judgment, judgment, judgment everywhere. And then it says, is that not the day of the Lord? That's the day of judgment and the day of darkness. There'll be no light at all, no brightness in each at all. Let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 51. Remember, we're looking at Babylon in particular. But then we're making application not only to Babylon, but all the inhabitants of the earth, all the cities of the earth, everyone living on the earth, which understand that judgment is coming. In Jeremiah chapter 51, reading from verse 8, Jeremiah chapter 51, reading from verse 8, Babylon is suddenly falling and is destroyed. Howl for her, weep for her, scream for her, take balm for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon. 
but she is not healed. For her sake, let us go every one into some country, for our judgment reaches unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. And then he tells us in verse 10, the Lord has brought forth our righteousness. Come and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord has raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, for his device is against Babylon to destroy it, because it is the vengeance of the Lord and the vengeance of his temple. Judgment is going to come upon Babylon, the Babylon of the future. It came in the past, it's still going to come in the future. I've told you already that when the Antichrist sets up his kingdom, he's going to build a capital city. And that keep capital city will be like the city of an emperor and it will be in charge of all the empire and it will be like babylon of old and it is going to be the capital of the antichrist and because it's going to be the capital of the antichrist the judgment is going to come upon that babylon that's what he's saying here he's looking at the past as well as looking at the future he tells us in verse 12 set up the standard upon the walls of babylon make the watch strong set up the watchmen prepare the ambushes for the lord has both devised and done that which is speak against the inhabitants of babylon O thou that dwellest upon many waters abundant in treasure thine end is come and the measure of thy covetousness that is eventually end the end will come the end will come for babylon not only babylon the end will come for everyone that has been living in sin living in immorality and there has not been any change no repentance no salvation ezekiel chapter 27 in ezekiel chapter 27 verses 12 and 13 in ezekiel chapter 27 verse 12 verse 13 tashes what should i mention by reason of the multitude of all kind of their of riches with silver and iron and tin and lead and they traded in their fears javan and tubal and meshek they were thy merchants and they traded the persons of men and the vessels of brass in thy market and so you understand that uh, as we talk about this babylon that judgment will come if you go back to the revelation you'll see it says the kings of the earth shall bewail her and lament for her and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her the merchants shall stand afar off weeping and wailing they shall they, they shall put or cast doors on their heads and they will cry weeping and wailing for in one hour she is brought she is made desolate the sudden fall and the sudden destruction of babylon will cost great mourning and weeping and wailing and lamentation the kings and the merchants of the earth who have had Babylon as their source of their source of power and their source of wealth and their source of pleasure and their source of luxury will be sorrowful when they shall see the smoke of her torment standing afar off for the fear of her torment they dare not approach because they are unable to rescue they are unable to save her they are unable to render any relief for because they can only lament saying at last at last that great city babylon that mighty city for in one hour is thy judgment come well before i go to point number two i want to remind you that what happened what is going to happen to babylon will also happen to every individual that lives like babylon every individual that behaves like babylon every individual that forsakes the lord every individual that has not honored the lord there will be four things you are going to find number one desolation number two darkness number three damnation number four destruction number one there's going to be desolation for the people that the lord had been calling and the lord had been saying come unto me repent of your sin turn away from your evil if you are adamant in sin or maybe our neighbors if they are adamant in sin there's going to be desolation that will come upon them in proverbs chapter one proverbs chapter one i'm reading from verse 24 because i have called and ye refused I've stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel and would none of my reproof, as the Lord had me calling them through the preachers, through the ministers, and through the people of God that are publishing and proclaiming the way of salvation, the word of salvation. And we're calling them, inviting them, come to the Lord, stop sinning, repent, turn to the Lord. 
believe on the Lord. He wants to save you. He died for you. He wants to wipe your sins away. And he wants to so forgive you that there will be no remembrance of your sins anymore. They neglected. They overlooked. They will not listen to the voice of the one calling them. And then the Lord said, they have set at not all my counsel. I would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation. And your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you. And that's what the Lord is saying. That those who are impenitent. And those who refuse to repent. Desolation is going to come upon them. Not only desolation number two darkness. Darkness will come. And it's a kind of darkness that will, be, that will bring terror. That will bring suffering. That will bring pain. We're told in Matthew chapter 8. From the words of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. In Matthew chapter 8, I'm reading to you from verse 11 and verse 12. Matthew chapter 8, verses 11 and 12. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness, where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Number one, there's going to be desolation. For the people that have rejected the word of the Lord, the word of repentance, and the word of faith, and the word of the gospel, there is going to be the judgment of God upon them. And therefore, there's going to be desolation. And the Lord says, I will laugh when your calamity comes upon you. Desolation will come upon the unbelieving or repentant people. Number two, darkness. And there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then number three, there's going to be damnation. Sinners will be damned. And the deceivers will be damned. And the false prophets will be damned. And the people that are making merchandise of people, making money out of people, and they say they are preaching the gospel, they are establishing church, and they are only there to deceive people, and they are not showing the way of repentance, the way of righteousness, the way of salvation, and they are only deceiving people. Their damnation will be like the damnation of the people they have deceived. In Second, in Second Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 3. And through covetousness shall they with faint words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Damnation will come. Judgment will come. The wrath of God will come. Devastation will come upon those some believing people. Number four, there's going to be eternal everlasting destruction. In Second Thessalonians chapter 1. Second Thessalonians chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 7. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. You are born again and they are persecuting you. Rest with us. You are a child of God and people are speaking against you. Rest with us. Uh, you, you are following the way of the Lord and people are trying to put pressure on you to turn you back from the way of righteousness. Relax, rejoice, rest with us. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire with taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the time is coming when judgment will come upon the people that know not God they have opportunities of knowing God they don't know God the gospel churches are there they don't know God and then the, the churches that are preaching the word of God are there and they, they are free to attend but they don't want to attend they don't know God and the people that are preaching repentance restitution righteousness were preaching it but they don't want to hear they do not know God and then it says and the people that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ it's one thing to hear. It's the other one. It's another thing to obey. It's one thing to hear the word of the gospel and the word of righteousness and the word of holiness and the word of purity. It's another thing to be obedient. And then the people that only hear and they obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, they will be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. And so for the people that are repentant, for the people that are adamant in sin, for the people that are impenitent, the Lord is saying, number one, there's going to be desolation. 
Number two, there's going to be darkness. Number three, there's going to be damnation. Number four, there's going to be destruction. I pray that every one of us will have attentive hearts and willing minds and will escape the judgment of the Lord on that final day in Jesus' name. I thought you will say amen. amen. Point number two now, warning of the desolation of Mary making Babylon. If there's anything you can say about Babylon, uh, Babylon is, uh, will be a merry-making city. It will be a city that will indulge the people in the lust of the flesh and the loss of the eyes and the pride of life. And yet, because of that, desolation is going to come upon that merry-making Babylon. That's why the Lord is warning us. We're reading now from chapter 18 of Revelation. Revelation chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 21. And, and imagine mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea saying thus with violence shall the great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Do you see the picture here? An angel carried a big stone, a heavy stone and then he threw it with all his power, all his might into the sea. And what will happen, that stone will sink to the bottom of the sea and will never rise again. And it's a picture of what is going to happen to Babylon. Then in verse 22, it says, And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be, shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more more at all in thee. Verse 23 And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the, the, the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all the nations deceived. And you see what, what, what we're reading here. It says that the destruction of Babylon will be violent. And that's the picture of that angel carrying that heavy stone and throwing it with his might into the sea. It is pictured by the mighty angel throwing a huge stone into the sea. Notice the thrust of his throw. Number two, notice the violent impact of the stone as it hits the water. And then number three, notice the immediate disappearance of the stone as it sinks into the bottom of the sea. And then number four, it is never to be seen again. And then the violent waves that begin to rush out up from that spot in every direction. When you throw a stone like that, there'll be, there'll be the ripples, there'll be the waves that'll be just, that'll, that'll just be spreading and spreading. It's telling us that the, the, the fall of Babylon is going to be sudden, it's going to be swift, and it's going to be complete. And because Babylon is going to be forgotten, after that destruction, it will rise no more. The destruction of Babylon will be violent, will be swift, and will be total. And the city will be as completely destroyed as a stone was covered by the sea. And the destruction will be so total and complete and final that you find the words no more, no more, no more, used so many times. Look at verse 20, 21. The great city, Babylon, shall be found no more at all. Look at verse 22. The voice of harpers and the musicians shall be no more heard at all. And that same verse 22. And the voice of the millstone shall be no more heard at all. Verse 23 now. And the light of a of a candle shall shine no more at all. Again in verse 23 it says the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all. That means Babylon shall be totally destroyed and will never rise again, will never, will never be rebuilt again. Let me summarize uh, that section before I read the passages of scripture to you. Number one, no more magnificence or majesty. Babylon that a magnificent Majesty is thrown down. And then the Lord says, no more. Majesty, magnificence, no more. Number two, there will be no more merriment. All the enjoyment, all the lost, all the merrymaking, everything is gone. Number two, no more merriment. Number three, no more music or melody. Because it says the voice of harpers and the voice of musicians and of the pipers and of the trumpeters shall be no more heard at all in thee. No more music and no more melody. I want you to picture a city, a city where life had been bubbling. 
a city where almost every evening there was party almost every evening there was a there was celebration a city where every weekend they'll close the streets and then people are dancing and drinking and enjoying themselves the way they think and now no more magnificence no more majesty no more merriment, no more music, no more melody, number four. No more marketing or merchandise or money making. All the trade, everything is gone. All the markets are burnt or fire. All the merchandise, all the things that were listed in those verses were read. In Revelation chapter 18, that they were selling, marketing, money making, everything totally destroyed. And then number five, think about this, no more marriages. And you see the people, it will be like in the days of Noah, when people were eating and drinking, and they were giving in marriage and taking, and all of a sudden, devastation and judgment and destruction will come. And no more marriages, because it says, and the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride shall be no more heard at all in thee. And then it tells us, no more mysticism or magic. All the sorcerers, they are destroyed. All the magicians, they are destroyed. And all the people that are using occultic paths, no more. The Lord says everything is going to come to an end. Magnificence, gone. Majesty, gone. Merriment, all gone. Music and melody, gone. Money making, merchandise, marketing, everything gone. Marriages, no more. And then mysticism and magic, all gone. It's going to be a terrible time. When all those people that have been thinking the essence of life is just to enjoy, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. All of a sudden destruction and death and devastation will come upon them. And all the things they were thinking about before, they say, let, let me take my part of it, let me enjoy life. Everything comes to an end at a, at a particular spot. That's how it's going to be. That's why the Lord is warning us, if you are going to repent, this is the time to repent. If you are going to come out of the devastation and the destruction so you will not take part in the judgment that will come upon the end time Babylon this is the time to turn unto the Lord in Jeremiah chapter 51 verses 63 and 64 Jeremiah chapter 51 in Jeremiah chapter 51 here Jeremiah is revealing to us the mind of God and the purpose of God and the plan of God what the Lord had determined had decided it is going to happen and if anyone wants to seek the face of the Lord this is the time to seek the face of the Lord Jeremiah chapter 51 I'm reading to you verses 63 and 64 and it shall be when thou hast made an end of reading this book that thou shalt bind a stone to it and cast it into the midst of Euphrates, and thou shalt say, Thou shalt Babylon sink, and shall not rise from the evil that I will bring upon her, and they shall be weary. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. And you'll see that the same thing will be demonstrated by Jeremiah. All the lamentation, all the war, all the judgment, all the wrath, all the indignation, all the, all the punishment that will come upon Babylon. It says when you have made an end of declaring the judgment and the lamentation and the war that will come upon Babylon, bind everything to a stone and throw it into the river Euphrates, that it will sink and rise no more. And then declare to them, thus it shall be done unto Babylon. And thus it shall be done unto the people that hate the Lord, that hate the word of the Lord, that are not repenting of their sins, that are not living the way the Lord wants them to live. In fact, that's the same language that was used for the Egyptians and the chariots of Pharaoh that sank into the very depth of the sea because they, they sank and they were to rise no more. In Exodus chapter 15 verse 5. Exodus chapter 15 reading from verse 5. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed in pieces the enemy. And so you will see it is not just Babylon alone. Egyptians too, and Syrians too, and Syrians too. And all the people that hate the Lord, all the people that do not follow after the way of the Lord, when the judgment will come, that's how it will come. And then they will sink to the very bottom of the sea. The the sea of wrath and the sea of judgment and they will never rise again in, in Nehemiah chapter 9 we're reading from verse 11 Nehemiah chapter 9 reading from verse 11 thou didst divide the sea before them 
so that they went through the midst of the sea on dry land and they persecute us thou through us into the deeps as a stone into the mighty waters uh, you are getting the understand you are getting to understand now uh, the, the use of that language the stone the millstone the heavy stone the huge stone that the angel picked up and with his might he threw it into the river and then said this is what will be done to babylon it will sink into the judgment of god will never rise again and will never be rebuilt again it will be final it will be permanent and that judgment will never be reversed we're going back to revelation and revelation chapter 16 verses 19 and 20 revelation chapter 16 we're looking at verses 19 and 20 and the great city was divided into three parts and the cities uh, and the cities of the nations fell and great babylon came in remembrance before god to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath and every island fled away and the mountains were not found it has the description of the judgment of God. It's all over the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, and the prophets, and also in the epistles, you find the same thing. In Ezekiel chapter 27, Ezekiel chapter 27, reading from verse 21, Arabia and all the princes of Kedah, they, they occupied with thee in lambs and rams and goats in these they were thy merchants and all these merchants they are the people that were lament and they are the people that will be destroyed because all these will be found no more in Isaiah chapter 24 Isaiah chapter 24 we're reading from verse 1 Isaiah chapter 24 reading from verse 1 Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. It's talking about the judgment of God. And when that judgment comes, it's going to affect the whole earth. In verse 2, it shall be. As with the people, so with the priest. As with the servant, so with his master. As with his maid, so with her mistress. As with, her, as with the buyer, so with the seller. As with the lender, so with the borrower. As with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. That is, when that judgment will come, uh, there will be no escape. God will not spare anyone. It's no respecter of persons, the low and the high, the educated and the illiterate, the rich and the poor, the city man and the village man. The judgment will come upon everybody. In verse 3, it says, The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled. For the Lord has spoken his wo this word. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languishes and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws that's the reason they are being punished that's the reason the devastation is coming that's the reason the desolation is coming that's the reason they are going to enter into darkness that's the reason there will be damnation that's the reason there will be destruction it says in verse 5 the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws and changed the ordinances broken the everlasting covenant therefore as the curse devout the earth and they that dwell therein are desolate therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burnt and few men led the new wine mourneth and the vine languisheth all the merry hearted do sigh the sorrowful no merriment anymore and then in verse the mass of the tablet ceases and the noise of them that rejoices endeth and the joy of the half ceases they shall not drink wine with, with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that, that drink it. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. And you see, as, all, as we read all these things, you find Ezekiel is talking about it, Jeremiah talking about it, Isaiah talking about it, Hosea talking about it, Amos talking about it, the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John talking about it, the Apostle Paul talking about it in First Thessalonians. Everywhere we are, we are talking about in Revelation 2, it's being talked about the judgment of God that will come. That's the reason that if you are a sinner, you need to repent. If you are a prodigal son, a prodigal daughter, you need to come 
back to the Lord before it is too late because judgment is coming. All will be there. All who have rejected, all who have spawned or scorned the mercy of God, they'll be there. But it is only when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you are cleansed in the blood of the Lamb, that's when your sins will be forgiven and you'll pass from judgment unto life eternal. It tells us in Jeremiah chapter 16 verse 10, Jeremiah chapter 16 verse 10 and it shall come to pass when thou shalt show these people all these words and they shall say unto thee wherefore has the Lord pronounced all this great evil upon us and what is our iniquity and what is our sin that we have committed against the Lord our God then shall thou say unto them you see there are people that will say uh -uh, all this judgment of God all this destruction and devastation all this mourning and all this wailing and all the weeping and crying that will come as a result of Babylon being destroyed and then all the inhabitants of the earth mourning because judgment is coming upon them they will be saying uh -uh, what's the matter what's happening what have we done what iniquity has the Lord found in our hand in verse 11 then shalt thou say unto them because your fathers have forsaken me says the Lord and have walked after other gods and have served them and have worshipped them and have forsaken me and have not kept my law and you also the children and ye have done worse than your fathers for behold you walk every one after the imagination of his evil heart that they may not hearken unto me the Lord is saying that's the reason the judgment is going to come that's the reason it's going to cast the judgment upon them that's why the Lord is telling us that you have a mind to repent you have a mind to call upon the Lord this is the time so that you will not partake of the evil of the people of the wickedness of the people uh, by the way it even tells us in Revelation come back to Revelation chapter 18 and you will see the wickedness of Modros Babylon and the depravity of Modros Babylon and this is the reason why the judgment of God will be coming upon them and that's the reason it will be coming upon all the inhabitants of the earth as many as following the footpath in the steps of wicked Babylon. I come to point number three, the wickedness and the depravity of murderous Babylon. We're looking at Revelation chapter 18 verse 20. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. In verse 24, and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints, and of all that were slain upon the earth. That was the wickedness of Babylon, murderous Babylon, mystery Babylon, materialistic Babylon. Actually, mystery Babylon, materialistic Babylon are murderously united. The apostate church of the last days, supporting the Antichrist and the political system of the Antichrist where Babylon as its capital will persecute and kill many of the children of Israel, many prophets and many saints, just like they did in the past. All the people that believe and follow the Lamb during the Great Tribulation, they'll be persecuted severely and they'll be killed. And Babylon will be responsible for that. The capital city and the seat of power of the Antichrist will be responsible for that. That's one of the reasons the judgment of God will be so fierce and terrible upon wicked, depraved Babylon. I, we were told that when the full final judgment of the wicked, depraved, murderous Babylon eventually comes, heaven will rejoice. The earth will mourn. The earth will lament. The kings will mourn. The kings will lament. The merchants men, the merchant men, they will mourn and lament. The seamen, they will mourn and lament. Rich men will mourn and lament. Uh, and pleasure seekers will mourn and lament. But not so with heaven. All those who are in alliance with the Antichrist will mourn and lament when they see the judgment of God coming upon the people of this world at that time. But heaven will rejoice. The righteous will rejoice. When the great oppressor of the righteous, the great corrupter of the world is destroyed, there will be joy in heaven. That's why it says in that verse 20, rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. And that, but if you, are the, if you are part of the people of God, then you will rejoice.
rejoice. But if you are not part of the people of God, then you'll be among the people of the world and you'll be mourning at that time. Look at Revelation chapter 19 from verse 1. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God for true and righteous are his judgment. For he has judged the great all which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and has avenged the blood of the of his servants at her hand. Again they said hallelujah and a smoke that is the smoke of the burning of a Babylon rose up forever and ever. And while Babylon is burning, while the wicked people are mourning and lamenting the people of God are going to be rejoicing because eventually God brings judgment upon the people that are forsaking him and upon the people that persecute the saints of God and the prophets of God. Deuteronomy chapter 32. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, looking at verse 43. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 43. In verse 43, it says, Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful to his land and to his people. You see how God acts? He's merciful to his people. And then he punishes the judges, the people that torment or persecute the people of God. That's why we're told rejoice. Heaven will rejoice and the people of God on earth will rejoice as well. In Jeremiah, we we'll come back to this chapter again, chapter 51 of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 51, reading from verse 35. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 35 The violence done to me and to my flesh be upon Babylon Shall the inhabitant of Zion say My blood upon the inhabitants of Chaldea shall Jerusalem say Therefore thus says the Lord behold I will plead thy cause and take vengeance for thee I will dry, her, I will dry up her sea and make her springs dry and Babylon shall become heaps and the dwelling place of dragons and astonishment and unhissing without an inhabitant. Uh, that is the judgment of God that is coming upon Babylon. It says Babylon shall be heaps. And then will be a dwelling place for dragons. Will be an astonishment. And will be a hissing with, without an inhabitant. Look at verse 47. Therefore behold the days come. That I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon, and her whole land shall be confounded, and her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Then shall heaven and earth and all that is therein shall sing for Babylon, for the spoiler shall come unto her from the north, says the Lord, as Babylon has caused the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babylon shall fall the slain of all the earth. That's why the judgment is coming and that's why the heavens are going to rejoice and that's why on earth the people of God when they see when they hear of the judgment of Babylon they're going to rejoice as well because God has risen up to bring devastation and judgment to the people that forsake him to the people that neglect his mercy in Revelation chapter 11 verse 18 Revelation chapter 11 verse 18 and the nations were angry and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they shall be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them that destroy the earth. Because the Lord will rise up in anger, in wrath, in indignation, in great judgment, visiting vengeance and punishment upon the people that oppress the people of God, and it will destroy the destroyers of the earth, and then the people of God are going to be rewarded. That's why there is going to be joy among the people of God. Revelation chapter 16 verse 6. Revelation chapter 16 verse 6. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets and thou hast given them blood to drink for they are worthy. 
they are worthy. Uh, they are worthy of the punishment that is coming unto them. They are worthy of the indignation of the Lord that is coming upon them. They are worthy of the vengeance that comes upon them because they have done evil. They have, be they have been impenitent, unrepentant. The Lord pleaded with them, they will not repent. Because of that, the time of judgment has now come. In Jeremiah chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 33. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 33. Why trimest thou thy, thy way to seek love? Therefore, as thou also thought the wicked wants thy way. You see, that's the reason why judgment was coming upon the people here and upon Babylon as well and upon all other people that influence others to do evil. It says, you have taught your own wicked ways. You have taught other people your wicked ways. Also in the skirts is found the blood of the souls of the poor innocents. I have, I have not found it by secret search, but upon all these, yet thou seest, because I'm innocent. Surely, a sanger shall not turn, shall, shall turn from me. Behold, I will plead with thee, because thou seest, I have not sinned. The Lord was sinned, but you have sinned. You have done evil, but you say no, but you are innocent. We have not done anything evil at all. That's why judgment will be coming upon them in Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel chapter 22. The Lord is just telling us all over in the Bible that judgment will come upon the unbelievers, will come upon the people that are not following after the Lord. In Ezekiel chapter 22, reading from verse 9, In thee are men that carry tales to shed blood. That's the reason the judgment is coming. There are people that go around telling tales and, and they're knocking heads together. And it says, because in thee there are men that carry tales to shed blood. And in thee they eat upon the mountains. That's idolatry. In the midst of thee they commit lewdness. It tells us in verse 12, it says, in thee are they taking gifts to shed blood. And they take gifts and then and they destroy other people's life. Thou was taking usury and increase, and thou was greedily gained of thy neighbors by extortion, and has forgotten me, says the Lord. When people are doing evil like that for unlawful gain, you destroy other people because some people sent you, and then you do havoc and evil because some people sent you, and they, they, they give you some money to do evil to other people. It says judgment is going to come in verse 13. Behold, therefore, have I smitten in mine hand at a dishonest gain which thou hast made and at thy blood which thou hast been in the uh, which has been in the midst of thee can thy heart endure can thy hand be strong in the days that i shall deal with thee i the lord have spoken it and will do it judgment is coming that's why it says in verse 27 a princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood and to destroy the souls and to get this honest gain. Judgment is going to come upon all such people. But why are we studying all this? We're studying so we'll have the knowledge of the word of God. Why are we studying this? We're studying so that we'll know what will be happening at the time of the great tribulation. Why are we studying this? We're studying it because we want to remind ourselves that judgment will come upon the unbelievers. Judgment will come upon the sinners, young and old, men and women, powerful and mighty. The judgment of God is going to come and no, nobody will be able to escape. It may look like they're escaping today. It may look like, you know, nothing is happening. They're committing sin and they're doing evil and nothing is happening to them. But be assured that judgment will definitely come. Is there a way of escape? Oh yes, there's a way of escape. If we believe on the Lord, if we take the word of the Lord serious and we turn away from our sin, there will be escape. But if we neglect the great salvation that has been proclaimed unto us, then there will be no escape. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1. Therefore we ought to give the more honest heed to the things which we have heard. Lest at any time we should let them sleep. As you are coming to the Bible study on Mondays and you are coming to Sunday worship and you are listening to the word of God during the maybe workers meeting or whatever it is. Anytime we are meeting together, let us give heed to the things we are hearing so that you will, the judgment of God will not fall upon you without being prepared. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast. And every transgression and disobedience, every transgression and disobedience, every, every, every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? The salvation of the Lord. 
If you, if you neglect, if you reject, if you say, well, yeah, I just listen, but I'm not going to take it serious. How will you escape the judgment of God? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which had the force, uh, which had the force began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. And look at what Jesus said. He told the people that had the word of salvation from his mouth. He told them that I told you you must be born again, but you are not born again. I told you you must repent but you don't repent. I told you you must seek the face of the lost tribe to enter in at the straight gate and you have not striven to enter in at the straight gate. I've told you to separate yourself from every form of sin and you have not done it. How are you going to escape? Matthew chapter 23. In Matthew chapter 23 verse 33, ye serpents ye generation of vipers how can ye escape the damnation of hell? If you are hearing the word of God and yet you, you, you shrug your shoulders and you just uh, close your mind and close your eyes to the word of God and you do not totally repent and truly repent and you continue in the evil you've been doing before death can come upon you at any time or the rapture may take place at any time and then you are left behind how will you escape the judgment of God? Proverbs chapter 19 verse 5. In Proverbs chapter 19 verse 5, a false witness shall not be unpunished he that speaketh lies shall not escape. He that speaketh lies, he will not escape. Judgment is coming and Babylon is going to be judged. And all the people that have been influenced negatively by Babylon, they are going to be judged. And the Lord is saying, if you are telling lies and that's the only thing you are holding on to, and you are not holding on to the word of the Lord, you do not allow the blood of Jesus to cleanse you, change your life, turn you around, and you're still holding on to your lies. How are you going to escape the judgment of God? In Job chapter 11 verse 20. Job chapter 11 verse 20. But the eyes of the wicked shall fail, and they shall not escape they shall not escape and their hope shall be as a giving up of the ghost the wicked they will not escape the judgment of god they might be telling themselves don't, don't mind the preacher don't mind the preacher because you know there is peace god is not as hard as that god is not a taskmaster god is a loving god and whatever we do after all we are coming to church after all we are we identify with the church after all we're we're paying our tithes after all we're doing this we're doing that after all everybody knows that you know i'm part of them no, don't mind what the preacher is saying nothing like that will happen and hey, look at me how can god look at a person like me like this just because of lying just because of hypocrisy just because of idolatry just because of the little little sins i'm committing and then god will throw me into hell god cannot do anything like that there is peace look at first thessalonians chapter 5 first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3 for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction shall come upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape they shall not escape while they're deceiving themselves where they're cajoling themselves where they're kind of putting themselves to sleep spiritually saying there's no problem there's no danger everything is all right that's how they have been preaching that's how they have been saying they're just saying that it is not real judgment will not come god will still be blessing me judgment will come and it says while they're saying peace and safety sudden destruction shall come upon them hebrews chapter 12 verse 25 hebrews chapter 12 verse 25 it says see that ye refuse not him that speaketh you're hearing the word of god tonight and the lord is telling you that judgment is coming and the lord is saying don't reject don't rebel don't refuse here this is time to recognize who you are if you're a sinner the savior is waiting to save you and then you receive the lord and you repent of your sin believe on the lord jesus christ verse 25 see that she refused not him that speaketh for if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth how much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven the word of god is coming to us and the lord is saying if those people on earth if they did not escape the judgment of god when they rebelled and refused how are we going to escape if we neglect the word of god you want to listen to the exhortation to the counsel to the command of the lord jesus christ so you can escape the judgment of god in Luke chapter 21 verse 36, Luke chapter 21 verse 36, watch ye therefore, 
and pray always that she may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man we have learned today that day of judgment day of wonders hark the trumpet's awful sound louder than a thousand thunder shakes the vast creation round how the sermons are the sermons well the sinners had confirmed what are you going to do if that trumpet begins to blow right now if the judge appears right now see the judge our nature wearing clothed in majesty divine ye who long for his appearing then shall say this god is mine gracious savior gracious savior on us in that the day as thine you want to tell the lord oh lord i belong to you i want to belong to you when you will come and you will appear for your own people count me as part of yours now the powers of nature shake him at his look prepare to flee souls and sins deep sleep must waken summoned now is rust to see careless sinner careless sinner watch will then become of thee but to those who have confessed to those who have loved and served the Lord here below, he will say, come near, ye blessed, see the kingdom I bestow you forever shall my love and glory know. So consider and be wise. Don't push this aside. You've been coming to the Bible, so you've come before, you have come today again. Who knows the last message you will hear? O oh soul, consider and be wise. Seek salvation while you may. In this alone your safety lies against the awful judgment day. It is heaven or hell. The choice is yours. Which through eternity endures. Satan has taught mankind to sin. And lures them from the heavenly goal. Shall ye a further triumph win and doom your repenting soul to travel an unending road forever separate from God? Where God is not. An awful thought, a realm deserted, cast aside, was seen so full fruition, broad and evil, crowned and deified, where dread, remorse, and vain desire shall burn like an unconsuming fire. God stoops from heaven, He wants to save your soul. He calls you now from Calvary. What hope have you beyond the grave? Who can give you hope but He? Why longer in your sin remain? Your redemption, Christ was slain for your redemption christ was slain why don't you stand up and say lord no more carelessness no more hypocrisy no more sinning and there is no more there's no more impenitence i'll no more be stubborn i'll no more rebel against the word of god oh lord i want to be saved i want to remain saved i want to be holy i want to be righteous oh lord have mercy upon me here am i lord i'm calling upon you i don't want to perish with the babylonians i don't want to perish with the egyptians i don't want to perish with the people of the world oh lord i know that your eyes are purer are purer than to behold sin i don't want any sin in my life the sinners or the babylonians will perish forever and ever this is the day of mercy of mercy upon me lord forgive my sin change my life turn me around prepare me for heaven make me as pure as the lord jesus christ so that when the lord will come oh lord i will not regret i will not weep with the people that are going to miss the rapture and i will not be mourning and lamenting and weeping and crying and wailing with the people that shall miss heaven follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord the lord is calling you today again the mercy of the lord is coming to you again today why don't you call upon the lord and say lord here i am i'm calling upon you here i am i'm calling upon you here i am i'm calling upon you oh lord i need your salvation oh lord i need your forgiveness i will not play with my salvation anymore i will not gamble with my soul anymore oh lord here i am oh lord here i am have mercy upon me have mercy upon me lord have mercy upon me lord no more sin no more backsliding no more immorality no more iniquity and there is no more impenitence no more stubbornness no more hypocrisy and no more no more evil no more wickedness and no more persecution of the righteous lord i'm calling upon you have mercy upon me have mercy upon me lord i don't want to perish i don't want to perish i know jesus died for me he died on the cross of calvary he shed his blood for me so that i will be saved 
that so that I'll be forgiven. Oh Lord, here I am. Oh Lord, here I am. Why should I perish? I've had the word already. Why should I perish? I know the truth already. Why should I perish? I've had the gospel already. Why should I perish? I know that Jesus died for me. If I perish, that will be my fault. I have the choice to make. And I'm making the choice right now. I'm making Jesus my savior. I'm making Jesus my Lord. I'm making Jesus my redeemer. And I'm saying, oh Lord Jesus, don't let me perish with the world. Don't let me perish with the world. I give my life to Christ. I give my life to Christ. That fornication, I forsake. That adultery, I forsake. That sin partner, I forsake. The stealing, I forsake. All my restitution, Lord, I'm going to begin to do it from this very day. I'm going to begin to do it from this very day. I'm going to be a new creature. I'm going to be a new creature in Christ. No evil again. No sin again. No corruption again. No pollution again. No worldliness again. Oh Lord, I want to see your face when you come. What shall it be? What shall it be? What shall it be? After hearing all these words, if you still perish with the Babylonians, what shall it be? If you still perish with all those people that have never heard and the people that have never known the will of God, the way of God, if you perish with them, what shall it be? If you get into hell, where there shall be willing and wailing and gnashing of teeth, what shall it be? The Lord is calling you today. The Lord is calling you today. And the Lord is saying, come. Repent. He that hardness his neck, being often reproved, he'll perish and that without remedy. The remedy is available today. The remedy is available today. Salvation is available today. You can still call upon the Lord today. And the Lord can have mercy upon you today. If you will call upon the Lord in all sincerity and say, Oh Lord, here I am. Oh Lord, here I am. I, I will not perish. I will not perish. I will not continue in sin. I give myself to you. I surrender myself to you. Why don't you surrender your heart? Why don't don't you drop all the sin in your hand, all the evil in your heart, all the immorality in your life, all the running about and uh, fooling yourself and messing up your life, messing up yourself. What are you going to gain? That fornication will lead you to hellfire. Adultery will lead you to hellfire. All the drunkenness will lead you to hellfire. All the smoking, destroying your body, the temple of God will lead you to hellfire. All the fraud and all the stealing will lead you to hellfire. All the covetousness, the love of money, the root of all evil will lead you to hellfire. All the secret, sin, secret stealing and secret sinning, all that will lead you to hellfire. Why don't you call upon the Lord and say, oh Lord, here I am. 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 Forgive me. Forgive me. I believe that Jesus died for me on the cross of Calvary. He died so he can save me. He died so that I will not perish again. Oh Lord, here I am. Have mercy upon me. The Lord is merciful. The Lord is merciful. The Lord is merciful. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you call in sincerity. If you call with all your heart, if you call with all your soul, and if you tell the Lord, Lord, I'm going to serve you. Lord, I'm going to worship you. All the things I've been doing to mess up my life, all the things I've been doing to deceive myself, all the things I'm doing uh, that I'm paving the way to hell fire for myself, oh Lord, I turn away. Oh Lord, I turn away. Oh Lord, I repent. Oh Lord, I yield. Oh Lord, I surrender. I'm counting the cost. I'm counting the cost. I'm counting the cost. Who will hear all these and still perish? Who will hear all these and still go into the burning fire? Who will hear all these and go right back into prostitution? And go right back into adultery? And go right back into fornication? And go right back into the loss of the flesh? Who will hear all these and go right back into stealing and covetousness and bribery and corruption? Who will hear all these and still go back into the way of hypocrisy and the way of sin? Oh Lord, here I am. Oh Lord, here I am. Cleanse me cleanse me and wash me. Please understand uh, that getting to heaven is more than just coming to church. Getting to heaven is more than just opening the Bible and reading. Getting to heaven is more than being a worker in any church. Getting to heaven is more than being, having your name in the register of any book. Getting to heaven is more than being baptized in what I'll confirm. Getting to heaven means that you have turned away from sin. You have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and you have received Jesus as your personal Savior and Christ has come into your heart. And Christ has now transformed you. If any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. 
Old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. If you're a real child of God, the Spirit of God will be a witness with your heart that now you are a child of God. All things are gone. All things are gone. The corruption is gone. The evil is gone. All the backbiting is gone. All the gossiping is gone. All the carelessness is gone. All the witchcraft is gone. All the sorcery is gone. All the occultism is gone. All the secret cult and the serious society, everything is gone. Because now you belong to the Lord. There will be a new life in you. There will be a new life. In, you'll never be the same again. And people will know that you are different. And you'll not join the Babylonians anymore. The influence of Babylon will not be upon your life anymore. The influence of Babylon, of Egypt, of the world, will not be in your life anymore. You'll be totally different. You'll be totally different. If any man be a child of God, you're going to be separated from the world. All those things of the world will no more be there. There will be sincerity. There will be honesty. There will be purity. There will be righteousness. There will be holiness. Your life will be totally different. That's why the Lord has brought you here today. So that you will know. Anytime Babylon is going to be judged. Anytime sinners, they are going to be judged. And the sinners of every generation. And the sinners in every church. In every assembly. In every fellowship. In every locality. In every city. All the sinners are going to be judged. And this is time for you to escape the judgment of God. If you neglect salvation, how shall we escape? How shall we escape the judgment of God? But if you call upon the Lord today, if you will call upon the Lord today, then there will be salvation. And then the Lord will forgive you. And then you'll pass from judgment and you'll pass unto life. The Lord is calling you today. The Lord is calling you today and the Lord is saying, come, come. Why will you perish? Why will you perish? Why will you perish? While well, the Lord is calling you. The Lord wants you to be saved. And the Lord wants you to have life eternal. The Lord wants you to have the joy of knowing that you are going to heaven. That you have escaped hellfire. That will come upon the people of the world in the, on the final day. Call upon the Lord today. Call upon the Lord today. Make it an appointment for the Lord. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. If you perish, the choice is yours. If you get saved, the choice is yours. If you go to heaven, the choice is yours. If you go to hell, the choice is yours. If you come unto to the Lord Jesus Christ and you are reconciled with God, the choice is yours. But if you stray away from the Lord, if you go to the far country, if you remain in your sin, if you backslide, if you join wicked people to do evil, the choice is yours. Make up your mind what you want to do. Make up your mind where you want to spend eternity. Where will you spend eternity? Where will you spend eternity? Call upon the Lord today and say, oh Lord, here I am. I want to spend eternity with the Almighty God. I want to spend eternity with the holy angels of God in heaven. I want to spend eternity with Jesus, my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer. I want to spend eternity with the saints of God up on high. I want to spend eternity in joy, in peace, in glory, in holiness. In I want to spend eternity glorifying the Lord, honoring the Lord, exalting the Lord. I want to behold the beauty of the face of the Lord when I get to heaven. I don't want to spend eternity in hell. I don't want to spend eternity in hellfire. I don't want to spend eternity with the wicked, with the demons, with Satan. I don't want to spend eternity with the wicked people who are lost forever and ever, where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. I want to spend eternity with the Almighty God, where there is joy, where there is peace, and where there is the water of life, and where there's every good thing, O oh Lord, have mercy upon me, have mercy upon me. And then if you are going to be like that, if you are going to be for the Lord, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation? In all holy conversation, every man that has this open, he purifies himself, even as he is pure. Every man, every man, every man, everyone that has this open him, the hope of heaven and the hope of glory and the hope of seeing the Lord on the final day, every man that has this hope in him, purifies himself, even as he is pure. All the impurities of a Babylon, get rid of them. All the iniquities of Babylon, get rid of them. All the infidelity of Babylon, get rid of them. All the immorality of Babylon, get rid of them. All the inhumanity of Babylon, get rid of them. All the influence of Babylon, get rid of them. And all the impenitence of Babylon, get rid of them. And say, oh Lord, here I am, here I come. Here I come. I want to belong to the Lord completely, completely, completely. All my heart I give to the Lord. All my heart, all my life I give to the Lord. Wash me, Lord. Cleanse me, Lord. Make me whiter than snow, purer than diamond. Lord, do it for me, Lord. And the Lord will do it for you. The Lord will do it for you. Whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever 
shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And after you are, after you are saved, the Spirit of God himself will be a witness with your heart that you are a child of God. And then the Spirit of God will be leading you. Don't go this way. Don't go that way. Don't say that. Don't join that. Don't go that direction. Because he will be leading you in the way of righteousness for his name's sake. Make sure you settle the account of the Lord before you go. That you are saved, that you are a child of God, and the Spirit of God bears witness definitely with your heart that you are really now a child of God. And now you walk, and you live, and you move, and you, and you do everything that you do according to the way of the Lord. A sincere Christian, an honest Christian, a righteous Christian, a pure Christian, a holy Christian, a rapturable Christian waiting for the coming of the Lord. And when the Lord shall come and the saints shall go marching in, if you are saved, if you are righteous, if you are holy, if you are pure, if you have reckoned with the 